This is KGW News at Sunrise. 80 bullets were fired in Portland's most recent shooting, with one of those shots nearly hitting a man while he slept. It like went through the wall and it went like in my mattress, like where I was laying, so it was like, it was very close. It could have hit my head, it could have hit anything. Yeah, more on his close call and the Portland Police Bureau's response as shootings escalate. Also, some quick work from fire crews saved two homes from this brush fire in Aloha. Investigators suspect fireworks caused it. They're warning to everyone even after the 4th of July. Plus, we are making a little news ourselves. Today, the KGW signal will get much, much stronger. So for all of you that get your TV with an antenna, our multi-million dollar upgrade will make it even better. We'll have the details. Ah, can you see us now? Can you see us now? <laughs> I hope so. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Tuesday and welcome back. We missed Thank you. Thank you. Good time yeah, off. Great time at the beach and uh, mm. a lot of fireworks and sand. I was using the pumice stone on the old feetsies <laughs> last night because, yes, you're out there on the sand for multiple days and things it, aren't pretty. And it's going to get hotter today, <laughs> yeah. I believe. The, the temperatures, Rod, inching back up today. Yeah, today could be uh, come day number 10 of Portland hitting 90. That would be 10 days so far this year if we do it. We are starting off with a touch of morning cloudiness over the city. Other areas are clear. We're at 60 degrees. A nice morning, 76. But there's that high temperature later today of 90 degrees. All right, Rod, thank you. We begin this morning with another shooting in Portland. This time, 80 shell casings were found at the scene. Yeah, those 80 casings joined the bullets fired in more than 500 shootings in the city so far this year. Mike Benner spoke with one of the neighbors nearly hit by one of them in Northeast Portland. Evidence markers and bullet holes line Northeast Wygant between 7th and 8th following a shooting late Saturday night. I was just having a dream, just chilling, man, and boom, just like that, so... DeAndros Robinson was asleep when the gunfire started. One of the bullets traveled through an exterior wall and right into his bedroom. It like went through the wall and it went like in my mattress, like where I was laying. So it was like, it was very close. It could have hit my head, it could have hit anything. The 19 year old escaped uninjured. Everybody else in the neighborhood did too. It's remarkable when you consider bullets hit other apartments, not just Robinson's, and parked vehicles as well. According to Portland Police Lieutenant Greg Pashley, Detectives found more than 80 shell casings. Now, most likely multiple shooters, uh, unless somebody had a gun in each hand, which isn't very common. Unfortunately, what happened in the King neighborhood is becoming far too common in Portland. So far this year, there have been more than 570 shootings. That's more than double the number of shootings in the same time period last year. From the police perspective, uh, we know the losses that we've taken, both in budget and staffing. We believe deeply that that has uh, impacted the community in a way that we're all seeing and, and now living through together. And so what we hope is that there's uh, some resolution. Resolution, Pashley says, won't happen until the police bureau is rebuilt, along with community trust in police. Back on Northeast Wygant, neighbors just want to feel safe again. None like this happened, but I, I get it. You know, it's a crazy world. Can't be complacent, but still in this neighborhood, nothing like that happened really. So. Reporting in Northeast Portland, I'm Mike Benner for KGW News. So on our 6 p.m. show called The Story, we've been talking with community advocates and victims of gun violence in Portland to get a better sense of what's led to the increase in shootings and what it might take to turn things around. You can watch our full special report now. It's up on KGW's YouTube channel, and we will continue to cover this issue. So let us know if you have an idea of something we should look into. Well, fire crews stopped this brush fire near Aloha and they stopped it just in time. It came very close to two homes yesterday at 229th and Rosedale. Investigators say the fire was intentionally set and possibly related to fireworks. Firefighters hope you continue to avoid fireworks and other outdoor burns even after the 4th of July. Right now, absolutely no fires. The burn ban is going on and we have such dry weather right now with no rain in sight that it's it's pretty scary. Tualatin Valley Fire and Rescue has been training recently to respond to these types of fires, so they were able to quickly stop it from spreading. Fireworks may have played a role in this fire that destroyed a unique home in Battleground. The property burned early yesterday morning. Investigators aren't really saying much other than someone is responsible for starting this fire. You know, it's not really sunk in. 
but you know, I had a lot of stuff and you know, it's all gone. Steve Slocum lived at the house, which used to be a church. The property is also where he kept his large collection of antiques, including several mannequins and dolls, and all that made the firefight difficult. There were still flames and small explosions coming from the home when we were there yesterday. Slocum is also a photographer and lost his life's work in this fire. I was able to go in and get my dog at one point, and, uh, but I should have grabbed my hard drives and stuff like that, you know, and it's all gone. A neighbor's camera caught a car stopping in front of the house and throwing what may have been fireworks. The fire marshal is now investigating. Let's get to three things to know about coronavirus this morning. Number one, U.S. health officials now turning their attention to the Delta Plus variant. India announced it was a variant of concern, saying it's more contagious and could potentially evade some antibody response. Scientists say the plus variant isn't necessarily more dangerous than the normal Delta variant. And so far, health experts say vaccines offer protection against all the known variants. Number two, a rower for the Serbian Olympic team has tested positive for the virus as they just arrived in Tokyo. The infection was confirmed over the weekend. He was immediately isolated. The other four team members were designated as close contacts and they're currently under quarantine in temporary private rooms per government guidelines. And number three, a new study says lottery-based incentives to boost vaccination rates, uh, they don't work. Researchers looked at shot rates in Ohio before and after the state's Vax-a-Million incentive. Compared with CDC data from states with no incentive programs, the results showed Vax-a-Million did not lead to more shots. Meanwhile, Oregon officials have said they'll announce the winners of the state's vaccine lottery for $1 million this week. There were other prizes, prizes drawn for each county as well. And those are your three things to know right now. After a difficult year of wildfires and COVID restrictions, Oregon wine country is making a comeback. Places like King Estate Winery and Pfeiffer Winery are seeing plenty of returning customers. In fact, in some cases, they're having trouble keeping up with the sudden surge. We, um, we've, we can't keep up with the events. We have, we have all sorts of wedding receptions and, and bachelor receptions and, and birthday parties. So you're in the shade and listening to the sound of the water feature, you know, it couldn't be better. It's wonderful. Before visiting, make a reservation or at least call ahead to make sure those tasting rooms aren't filled up. As for the recent heat wave, the folks at Pfeiffer Winery don't expect it to have a big impact on their grapes. They say the heat came early enough in the season, so the grapes should be just fine. That's good news. Yeah. All right, not only here in the Northwest, but across the country, we've got some stuff making news, Rod. Yeah, we do. I want to give you a quick kind of snapshot update on Tropical Storm Elsa. So here's the uh, Tropical Storm. You can plainly see the main rain band is now pushing inland into uh, South Florida. Current winds with this thing are sustained at 60 miles per hour. The track would take Elsa. It could reach Hurricane 1 strength. It's expected to stay just shy of that but it will be moving up along the uh, kind of paralleling the uh, west shore of Florida today. Rain amounts uh, could go, you know, six, seven, eight inches in some isolated locations. And of course, gusty winds with it here at home. All is quiet this morning. We are watching a fire weather watch. This is basically for the east slope of the Cascades and then off toward the uh, uh, Idaho border for today and tomorrow. And I think the main reason this was issued is for at least the chance of some late day thunderstorms today. The forecast modeling shows this is a spotty chance at best. So hopefully, you know, we won't have any issues. But again, possible fire starts later today east of the Cascades. And that's why there's a fire weather watch issue. All right, here are the uh, early morning numbers. I'm kind of battling a, a sore throat this morning, so my my speech uh, is getting a little choppy at times. I apologize. 59 in Salem, 60 in Portland, 64 degrees out in the Dallas. Seven day forecast. We do have some early cloudiness, but we will go on to be sunny. We hit 90 today. Salem could hit 93, but then tomorrow big changes. A solid marine deck, maybe some patchy drizzle. Slow clearing tomorrow, only 78. By Friday, we're back up to about 90 degrees. Back to a you. Short reprieve. All right, Rod. Thank you. Well, after the historic heat wave, I don't know about you, but. 
some of my plants <coughs> are torched dead. Totally. Yeah, coming up, we're going to give you some tips from a garden center on helping those plants come back to life after all that sun damage. Plus, a little more on that Delta variant. Can those who are vaccinated still transmit the virus? We're going to ask the experts to verify. And even though it's summer, it is not too early to start work on the KGW school supply drive. We want to help kids go back to the classroom with everything they need and you can help. Visit KGW.com school to sign up your business or organization and we'll send you an official kit to help us collect school supplies. Join us and make sure thousands of families, kids and teachers have a strong start to the school year.